Welcome back to Morning Coffee right here on the Radio Vision Network. I am Mark Cook, and I am thrilled right now because I have the top American author on the line with me right now. That's right. I said top American author. I think a lot of people try to clarify. They say top female author. I say no. I say top author. Her name is Mary Higgins Clark. You know her. She has sold over 100 million books in the U.S. alone. Good morning, Miss Clark, and welcome to Morning Coffee. Oh, good morning, Mark, and lovely to have coffee with you. <laughs> this is fantastic. I want to talk right off the bat about the new book, The Sleeping Beauty Killer. This is the third installment uh, in your Under Suspicion series, and I need to just know where did the inspiration come from, and, and tell me how great it is to keep writing with Al Fair Burke. Well, I'll start with that. Al Fair is a wonderful author. And a couple of years ago, Simon and Schuster, my publisher, said, we like the characters and under suspicion, the producer, the radio host, the television host, and we want them to continue. But they said, we think you don't want to do two books in one year, so would you consider having a co-author? And I said, I'd be delighted. So they sent me five different books from five different authors. And the minute I read Alice their Berg, I said, this is the author I want to work with. So we've done three books together now, and we just signed a contract for two more. So all goes well. Yeah, it's amazing because obviously you're the queen of suspense, and, and Al Fair, she's got an amazing legal history. So the combination of the two of you, it really, really puts out excellent stories. Oh, well, thank you. Well, we both have a good background. Of course, Alice there was a federal prosecutor, and now she teaches in a college. She teaches criminal law. My part of the story is I have a judge who is a criminal court judge and on the bench every day. So I can get from her, uh, read this, what do you think? And she said, no, the prosecutor wouldn't say that. The defense attorney would. So I've been able to, and I used to go to trials all the time, so I've absorbed a fair amount of criminal knowledge and lore. So between the two of us, we do a pretty good job. Yeah, it's a, it really, and it comes across in the writing. And, and, you know, just to kind of speak to your success, and that's it. It's about hard work. It's doing the things that you need to do to be prepared to be able to write. You are an amazing inspiration to any aspiring author out there because your process is unique. Do you want to talk about that for a second? Oh, sure. Well, of course, I was always a writer. From day one, when I was six years old, I was trying to write a suspense story and making my brothers perform in them. And then all through high school, uh, I was writing short stories in math and science, which did not endear me to Mother St. Thomas of Canterbury. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I went back and had the 15 number one bestsellers. She looked at me, she never forgot one of us, and she said, you were a dreadful math student, Miss Higgins. <laughs> 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 so I curtsied as we did in those days, and I said, God bless your memory, Reverend Mother. <laughs> But I was always writing, and in the 60s, I was selling a lot of short stories. A few major magazines, the Saturday Evening Post, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. But then every one of them went to nonfiction. No more fiction stories. Saturday Evening Post used to publish about 12 of them, and they went straight to nonfiction. How to be your husband's best friend, how to grow grass, on and on we go. And my agent said, unless you write a book, I can't get you published. So that was the beginning of going into books. And the first one I wrote came out in 1969, uh, Mount Vernon Love Story, which went nowhere at the time. <laughs> but then I thought, I, I had two kids in law school, two in expensive colleges, and one in a private girls' school. And I was widowed, of course. So I said, I've got to write a book that will sell. And I looked at my bookshelves and realized how much I loved to read suspense. 
that I was good at figuring out this one sentence is where I should watch for the killer. And I had trained myself in suspense. So I started with the first one, uh, the first suspense stories, which was Where Are the Children? And it's been a very good ride ever since then. Well, and I'm sure it's really funny because they probably go back to that first book and they're like, this book is really good, but you remember it didn't sell when it came out, right? It wasn't until your later success that it comes full circle, right? Well, it did not hit the bestseller list in hardcover, but it became a major bestseller in softcover. And then the other things, it was optioned for a movie. It went to Peter's uh, Reader's Digest, which is a very big international sale right. from one country to another. France bought it, England bought it. So by the time I had, it came out six months later, I, I was a known best-selling author. And then the trick, of course, was to make the second book work. And that when a stranger was watching, they called even more suspenseful. So by then I was on my way, happily. Yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing. Now, I think part of the reason why I'm so excited is because my parents are very avid readers of yours. And I want to throw three titles at you. Uh, Moonlight Becomes You, Remember Me, and Where Are You Now? They are their three favorites. Do these books hold a special place in your heart? Well, I'll be honest, every single one, because it's like, which child do you like the best? Right. You know, there is no answer. <laughs> Each one I gave my all to, so that when it was finished, and I say, I can't do another single thing to it, and then you put it out. So each one of them has been special to me. So I can't honestly uh, say this one was a favorite, because the different stories come up, and how about this one, how about that? Do I believe this would happen? And sometimes I have to go back and read a few pages to figure out what that one was about. <laughs> it's really funny. My father just finished Moonlight Becomes You, and he said it was absolutely fantastic. He's going to pass it along to me. After I read Sleeping Beauty Killer, uh, which I can get on Amazon right now. It came out yesterday. This is fantastic. Uh, I know I can get it on Amazon. Uh, Miss Clark, do you have somewhere where you would prefer people to get it? Uh I'm sorry, I missed that question. Well, I know I could get the book on Amazon, but do you have somewhere specific that you would like people to go to get the book, or just get it wherever you can? Well, wherever they can. Some people love to use the tablets. Others want the feel and smell of a book. And, of course, Barnes & Noble carries them. Right. As do some local bookstores. So wherever you're comfortable reading is the place. I like to have a book in my pocketbook under the pillow kind of thing. Yeah. But many, many people find the tablet is much easier to carry around, and you can put three or four books on it. So it really is up to the individual, which is your way of saying this is the way I want to read. Yeah, well, the bottom line is, is everybody needs to pick up the book because the story is absolutely fantastic. It's about a woman who was uh, basically wrongly accused, but then she was convicted, and then she gets out, and she gets help from this TV news magazine, this journalist. This, this story is just fantastic. And I know that I'm running out of time here, so I was just wondering what you have planned for the holiday season and, and looking ahead to 2017. Well, of course, I have a large family. I mean, children, grandchildren, and so does my husband. We're married 20 years, widow, widower. So I always have the cattle call out. Everyone's invited for Thanksgiving, for Christmas, for any events, people's birthdays. And, of course, some can make it and some can't. Some come early and some, some say we'll be there for dessert. But virtually everyone makes it. So it's always an average, and some nieces and nephews. So it's always an average of 31 to 35 wow. for all the holidays. Yeah, and that's... Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, I'm the guy who cooks beautifully. 
<laughs> and he likes big crowds. He says, I'm used to cooking for big crowds. <laughs> That's lucky. So that, I am blessed, blessed, <laughs> blessed. Well, this has been my absolute pleasure. I, I, I really enjoyed spending a few minutes talking to Mary Higgins Clark here. I urge everybody to go grab the Sleeping Beauty Killer. Uh, thank you, Mary. I really appreciate you spending a few minutes with me here on Morning Coffee. Oh, well, thank you so much. It's a joy to be with you again. Oh, you're quite welcome. Thank you. Everybody, go out right now. Get it. You know you can get it everywhere, the Sleeping Beauty Killer. You've got to love it. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you again to Mary Higgins Clark for joining me. I don't know how often I'm going to get to speak to an author that sold over 100 million books, so that was pretty cool. You're going to stay right there on uh, Radio Vision Network because we ain't going anywhere, kids. We're going to be right back, so stick around. When it's time for Jersey Mike's to give a sub some sizzle, this is the way. The way it's always been. The way it always should be. The way it always will be. Because that's just the way it's supposed to be.